Good morning, and welcome to the class of 2026 White Coast Ceremony. This is our first three-year DMD class. I'm Dr. William Harmon. I have the privilege of serving as the Associate Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs, and I'd like to extend a special welcome to the family, friends, students, faculty, pre-health advisors, and mentors who are live streaming our ceremony throughout the world. At this time, I ask that you all rise for the national anthem, which is played on this recording by the United States Coast Guard Band. Thank you, please be seated. I now invite Mary Hazlitt, member of the class of 2026A to welcome all of you to today's gathering of lifelong colleagues. Hi friends and family, it's so good to have you here. Today is an exciting day, well, you, I bet you're wondering why. I'm excited because now the Roseman family is officially bigger. Yay. Bigger is always better in my opinion. I should know I am the child of eight children. And it was really great because when I would get sick of my, uh, my siblings, I could go find someone else to hang around. I had at least seven. So the nice thing about being in a family is we ate together. We laugh together, we cried together, we work together, but most importantly, we grew together. And being a part of our Roseman family is extraordinary. Why do you ask? Because we are different. I remember so clearly the day that I was interviewed. I know you remember that day too. I was introduced to Roseman and how it operated, it's its foundation, its meaning, and its mission. I remember writing down the things that were said and the part of my paper that was circled, highlighted, and starred were the three commitments. They wouldn't leave my mind. They resounded with me. This was the kind of person I wanted to be and, this were, and these were the kind of people I wanted to associate with. It was so different from all the other programs I had applied to. I had so many questions. Fortunately, I got to my chance to ask those questions later that afternoon during my individual interview. The main question I asked the D4s at that time is the culture of the three commitments actually a part of the school? I was pleasantly surprised. They all answered a resounding yes. So fast forward to today, I've been here for a year. Does Roseman live up to my expectations? It has, and it can continue. I, but you know, one thing I've learned is that it takes accountability and integrity on our own part and hard work each and every day. So my new family, are you ready to be a part of something extraordinary? 
let me tell you about the three commitments so we can share and build this Roseman family stronger together. The first commitment is we make each and every interaction reflect a sincere desire to develop each other as lifelong colleagues. What has this looked like for me? Upon arrival, I noticed that all of us had different talents, life skills, and skill sets. I personally have been in dentistry for the last 20 years as a dental hygienist, and a little more past that too. Here in our clinic, I get to spend time working with my upperclassmen and many different doctors. I have been honored to share my knowledge about dental hygiene, and in turn, I have been supported, mentored, and encouraged in a new and more, in, in more expansive ways of, den of doing dentistry. As we have relied on each other, struggled through hard times, and had some fun together, of course, I have found that this has built a stronger, better, and more united bond in my Roseman team, or rather I like to call them my team family. The second commitment of Roseman is the honor code. I will not lie, steal, cheat, disrespect others, nor tolerate among us any who does. Listen, for me, this is the golden rule. I am a proud mama to three crazy, beautiful, strong-willed, smart children. And they have learned at times the hard way that being honest is better than being dishonest. Uh, if, so Mark Twain also says, if you tell the truth, you have nothing to, you don't have to remember anything. Honesty is the best policy. In fact, I know this commitment will transcend your, your academic season and integrate into every facet of your life. Be true, to the, be true and people will feel it. Be honest and people will hear it. Be respectful and people will be drawn to it. Dr. Moffat encouraged my class during one of our lectures about professionalism and success in dentistry by saying there's always room on the top. And I believe honesty, integrity is the pathway to get there. The third commitment is to each other. I commit to you to help you become the best you can be at, at what you do and will celebrate our successes. I want you to think of someone you have deep respect for. Is this person a person that makes you want to be a better version of yourself? Mine is. I began working for Dr. Roseanne in 2007 as her hygienist. She was amazing. She was an amazing dentist and a, and, a, and a mentor for me. She gave me the opportunity to grow. As my passion for dentistry continued to deepen, Dr. Roseanne supported and encouraged me to return to school. Along with all the, all the support of, and love of my husband and my three children, I am here in dental school. I am proof positive that this commitment can accomplish miracles. We all benefit from cheerleaders, and I think that Roseman carries the biggest cheer squad I have ever seen. It's amazing to attend a school where your professors, mentors, and peers all have a vested interest in your success. At Roseman, we win together, and we make mistakes together. But whatever level you find you are at, there's always hands reaching down to lift you up. The irony here at Roseman is that while you can, you can get to be your best self by having others support you, you cannot achieve your best self without doing your share of the lifting. In closing, I want to share something a little close to my heart. In embarking on this adventure, I had great trepidation that my own family and I would not be able to feel at home in our new place. I worried about my kids' schools and friends and how, would, how we would adjust to such a big change. Funny thing is that we discovered that being together is all it took for, for us to feel at home. No matter where we were at, if we were together in our family, we were home. So my new Roseman family members, 
For the next three years, this is your safe place to learn, laugh, and most importantly, grow together. And so it is with much excitement that I say to you, welcome home. Thank you, Mary, for welcoming all assembled to this gathering of lifelong colleagues and for being a tremendous role model as a lifelong colleague. Thank you. Many of you will discover that Roseman's enduring culture of lifelong colleagues is indeed unique among dental schools. You will hear more about this throughout the program. Class of 2026 has learned about the three commitments that you just heard Mary describe that we make and keep with each other. This isn't something we put up on the wall and look at as a mission. We make it real each and every moment of the day. Ethics and professionalism are core to everything we do when working with each other and when providing person-centered care for our patients. We expect that each of you as individuals and collectively as the class of 2026B will continue the College of Dental Medicine's tradition of making ethics and professionalism as making ethics and professionalism a part of your life as students and practitioners. Once you accept the white coat today and recite the white coat pledge, you are confirming to all assembled and to those that they represent that you will live these principles and will let them guide your life and all of your interactions, present and future. Each person in attendance today, and this includes all of those on stage and all in the audience, has a vested interest in your commitment to ethics and professionalism. Those on stage represent the university and the College of Dental Medicine, organized dentistry that works with legislatures and agencies to protect the health of the public and the profession of dentistry, research that provides you with the information on providing the best in treatment, and of course, our student organizations and all members of our audience here and attending via Zoom represent the patients and communities that you will serve. Our outstanding faculty has developed an innovative curriculum that represents the best practices in the art and science of dentistry with an emphasis on compassionate, data-driven, team-based, and efficient person-centered care. Led by Dean LeCarey, they are transforming dental education and setting new standards for person-centered care. Even better, you will contribute to that as well through real-time feedback to the faculty as well. So you're part of that program. Our DMP program is very fortunate to have staff members who are talented, dedicated, creative, and energetic. Our staff supports all of our clinical and academic endeavors. Although members of the faculty and staff, many of them are here today at Capitol Theater, some have remained at the school to continue to provide patient care. So let's move on to the introduction of the stage party. I ask that when I introduce you that you remain standing until all have been introduced, and I ask the audience to hold your applause until all have, uh, are standing. Jeremy Wells, Chancellor of Roseman South Jordan Campus. Mark Howard, member of the uh, Roseman University Board of Trustees. Dr. Frank LeCarey, Dean of the College of Dental Medicine. Dr. James Hupp, Senior Associate Dean of Administration. Dr. Joe Greer, Dean of the College of Medicine. Dr. Andrea Peterson, Empowered Executive Director. Dr. Heidi Iongi, Utah Dental Association Representative. Dr. William Carroll, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs. Dr. Jeremy Goderich, Associate Dean of Clinical Affairs and Patient Care. Dr. Clark Dana, Associate Dean, Student Progress and Curriculum. Dr. John Fairbanks, Assistant Dean of Clinical Education and Patient Care. Dr. Rachel Novak, Assistant Dean of Admissions and Student Affairs. Dr. Dwayne Winden, Assistant Dean of Academic Affairs. Dr. Joseph Cheever, Assistant Dean for Clinical Research. And I ask that the remaining faculty on stage also stand uh, who are involved with the DMD program. We have several student representatives with us as well. Samim Naruz, Dental Student Association President. The Dental uh, Student Association is our student council. Ben Raymond, 
Dental Student Association Vice President, Cooper Lynch, Class of 2024 President, Juan Arbizu, Class of 2024 Vice President, Claire Riley, Class of 2025 President, Stephen Park, Class of 2026A President, Mary Hazlitt, Class of 2026A. I thank all of you uh, for being here today to witness the donning of the white coach, the recitation of the pledge, and to celebrate with the class of 2026. Thank you. <laughs> Chancellor Wells will bring greetings to you on behalf of our university in a moment, but I want to let you know a little bit about him. Chancellor came to Roseman with significant administrative assistance experience at health science institutions. Most recently, he served as chief academic officer at South College in Knoxville, Tennessee, where he was responsible for all the institution's academic programs at five campuses and online operation centers across four states. Chancellor Wells completed his bachelor of science degree in business management and master's of education degree at Brigham Young University and a Juris Doctorate from The Ohio State University. I now invite Chancellor Wells to the podium to bring greetings on behalf of the university. Thank you, and on behalf of the university administration, we do welcome you. And we congratulate you students for being here. We know it's a competitive process, and we're thrilled that you're here. And we're committed to helping you achieve your career goals. We recognize that there are many in the audience who have traveled, and we appreciate the time and effort, money that you've spent in uh, coming here. I'm not a Utah native. I was born and raised in the state of Washington. And then in my married life, I've lived in the states of Ohio, Iowa, Florida, and most recently, Tennessee. And we have loved living here in Utah for the past two years. There are so many fun things to do. It's a great place to work hard and to play hard. So for those of you who are new, we hope that you enjoy the beauty of this state and the hospitality of its people. From my introduction, you perhaps recognize that I'm not a dentist, nor am I a medical doctor, nor am I a nurse or a lab researcher, yet here I am in a white coat. I am grateful for the College of Dental Medicine for making me an honorary member of the white coat wearing club. Whenever I put this coat on, I must admit, I stand a little taller and I walk a little bit uh, faster with more purpose. I even, smell, I even feel smarter. And studies actually show that people who view others wearing a white coat think they're smart and they think that they are trustworthy. And also studies show that the person wearing a white coat performs better, even cognitively. So truly, literally, wearing a white coat makes you smarter. And I find that interesting. I think it's because of the symbolism involved in it, the symbolism of excellence, hard work, trustworthiness, professionalism. And we try to live up to that standard when we wear the white coat. So recently, actually it was a year ago, we were trying to get acclimated to this great state, and so I took my children up to Olympic Park, uh, near Park City, and there's this training facility for uh, skiers who do acrobatic skiing, jumping. It's a fascinating facility. There's these huge, steep ramps that go down, and then there's this jump, which propels people 50, 60 feet in the air. They do all kinds of twists and flips, and then they land in a pool. And this pool is interesting because it has bubbles that come up that break the tension on the water so that people wearing skis can land softly in the water. And so I took my children there, and there's this performance that they do. It's amazing, and it is spectacular in every way. And as, as these skiers are going off, there's an announcer, and the announcer is saying, this is so-and-so Olympic gold medalist, or this is so-and-so silver gold medalist, or this is so-and-so a member of the national ski team. And afterwards, they're in the audience, and you can take pictures with them. And it was fascinating because there I was 
with my children five feet away as I was meeting these people, taking pictures with them, knowing that out of the eight billion people on this earth, that person right there is the best in the world at what she or he does. And so then driving home with my children, we were talking about that and how amazing that was. Well, fast forward a few weeks, and I decide that I need to take my wife, and so my wife and I go. It wasn't the performance. Instead, it was just people practicing. It was eight, nine, ten-year-olds, and they were practicing, and they would go down the smaller jumps, and then they would kind of awkwardly fly through the air, not very high, and then again awkwardly land in the water, and then they would have to swim over to the side. They would get out again. They have all these ski boots and skis on, and they, they struggle to take them off. And then what they do is interesting. They put those skis on their shoulder, and then they walk up. There's no ski lift. There's no conveyor belt, no uh, escalator. They walk up, and they do it again. And my wife and I were sitting there watching, and I had told her how, how spectacular this was. And honestly, it was boring. These kids were cute, but after watching them just one or, tw one or two times, it then became boring. It was anticlimactic. It wasn't spectacular. And they would, they would do this over and over again. And what dawned on me, and this is the point of the story, what dawned on me is I was watching the price to be paid for greatness. And it was boring. And it was tedious. And it wasn't spectacular like the few weeks before when I was watching the, final, the finished product. Instead, I was watching these little kids fumble their way around and do things over and over again. And it dawned on me that there is not an elixir for greatness. There's no secret magic bullet. It is simply repetition, practice, and hard work and dedication. And so for the next three years, all of you get to put in a ton of repetition, hard work, and practice, so that at the end of those three years, you can be great at what you do. But it's hard and it's difficult, and so I encourage you to be patient, but to persevere and to have passion or grit, and you'll do great things. And all of us, if we keep doing that, will be worthy to wear this white coat and represent all that it symbolizes. We're so happy that you're here. I'm gonna introduce Mark Howard. By the way, a university is uh, great because they have a great board of trustees. And the board of trustees help the university in uh, developing their strategy. So we have a board of trustees member here. His name is Mark Howard. He's gonna come up. By the way, he is a, a professional. He's a, he is a experienced executive of hospital administration throughout the Mountain West. We're glad that he's here. So we're gonna welcome him up to say a few words. After him, we're going to have Dr. Frank LeCarrie, our dean, uh, come up and introduce our keynote speaker, Mark. Welcome. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Roseman University, we're excited to see you a new dental class. I've had the privilege of serving on the Board of Trustees for several years. We started out as a pharmacy school, then we grew, then we had the dental school. Now we're gonna have an MD medical school. You'll hear from the dean shortly. We care about you. President Kaufman cares about you. The chancellor cares about you. The dean, you'll find that he's one of the most outstanding deans of any dental school in the United States. Why? because he cares about you. We want to see you succeed. We want you to work together as a team, as previously mentioned. You are the future. You are the ones that's gonna help others into dental school. I have a great love and respect for dentists. I had the opportunity the last year of the Vietnam War of serving as the hospital administrator of the hospital that transferred all the wounded and sick back to the United States. I had the privilege of living with the doctors and the dentists over there. And I wanna let you know that when we would come under attack, the dentists did not stay in the bunkers. They were at the hospital 
helping the doctors and helping the rest of us take care of the wounded coming in. They were more concerned about others than their safety. And the privilege of living with them for a year has made a great influence on my life and the respect that I have for dentists. Again, welcome from the Board of Trustees, and I guarantee you, we will take care of you. We want to see you succeed in dental medicine. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Howard. Our keynote speaker, Dr. Pedro Jose Joe Greer, joined the university as the College of Medicine's founding dean on June 1st, 2020, with establishing the goal of an innovative mid 21st century Las Vegas based medical school that will align students, educators, and community in designing and delivering an inclusive and collaborative environment for learning, healthcare, and research. Previously, Dr. Greer served as Professor of Medicine found, and Founding Chair of Humanities, Health, and Society and Associate Dean for Community Engagement at Florida International University, Herbert Wertheim College of Medicine in Miami, Florida. Working with various FIU colleges, Dr. Greer spearheaded the nationally recognized Green Family Foundation Neighborhood Health Education Learning Program, or Neighborhood Help, as its sh uh, shortened version is known as. This program prepared medical students and other health professionals, uh, students, to address the social determinants of health through a hands-on longitudinal experience caring for underserved households in Miami-Dade County. Better known as Joe, Dr. Greer has been an advocate for health equity by engaging communities to creative, effective healthcare and social policies and accessible healthcare systems. He established Camillus Health Concern Incorporated and St. John Bosco Health Centers for underserved populations in Miami-Dade County. He received numerous recognitions he was one of 500 most influential business leaders in life sciences listed in Florida Trend 2019. In June 2019, the AMA Foundation Pride in Profession Award. He also received the Bob Grant Center for Public Service Award in uh, 2017 and Citizen of the Year Award. In 2014, he received the National Jefferson Award in the category of Greatest Public Service Benefiting Disadvantaged. And in 2013, he received the Great Floridian Award. He also received one of our nation's highest honors, the Presidential Medal of Freedom, which was awarded to him by President Obama in 2009. And in 1993, he was honored as a MacArthur Foundation Genius Grant Fellow. He has published more than 30 articles and book chapters and wrote Waking Up in America, a book about life science, uh, his life experiences, including caring for homeless individuals and advising Presidents George Bush Sr. and President Bill Clinton on health policy. Dr. Greer is currently a trustee at the Rand Corporation America's oldest and largest think tank, and is a chair of the Pardee Grant Rand Graduate School of Board of Governors. He served as chair for the Hispanic Heritage Award Foundation from 2002 to 2012, and is an independent board member of the American Funds from 2016. He completed his medical studies at La Universidad Católica Madre y Ministra in the Dominican Republic, he trained in internal medicine and served as chief resident and completed two postdoctoral fellowships, hepatology and gastroenterology at the VA University of Miami Miller School of Medicine in Miami, Florida. Before joining uh, FIU, Dr. Greer also ran a successful private practice 
and was chief gastroenterology and hepatology at Mercy Hospital in Miami. Of all the titles and accolades he has, my favorite is that I get to call him my dear friend and colleague. Please welcome Dr. Pedro Jose Joe Greer to the podium to deliver our keynote address. Well, good morning. Let me get my glasses on. I'm old. Frank, thank you for those lovely words. I, I want you to know that my mother wrote them. And for all those lovely accolades, <clears throat> the one thing she taught me was, even if you don't deserve it, don't return it. Well, good morning to all of you and congratulations. I'm Pedro Jose Greer, Jr. They call me Joe. I grew up in Miami when it was a small, little, white, redneck town, and there was nobody there that could pronounce Pedro. I found out that California, there's nobody there that can pronounce Pedro either. It's like Vanna White handing out vowels. Pedro. My heritage is that I'm Cuban-Irish, which means I'm Cubish. And by definition, that means I'm from one poor, small, corrupt Catholic island to another. There's something wonderful about Roseman, and there's something exceptional about your dean, which is one of the reasons I chose to come here. This is a university with Innovate. Should in their mind, the fact that he graduates the most successful dentist in this country, in my opinion. I mean, he is so good, and I'm not kidding with this. I actually got a letter from a Midwest, uh, very large dental company that was so impressed with the Roseman uh, dentist that he wanted to congratulate me. I told him, thank you very much, but you're talking about Frank Licari. But I took the thank you. But I want you to know that this company felt that the graduates from Roseman were the best prepared graduates they had ever had in their clinics. And they look forward to recruiting even more. Well, this morning is a milestone in your dental student journey. Today, you become your journey, your, your journey to become a professional. The white coat ceremony is symbolic because it trans, transforms you from the status of an ordinary student to one studying to become a healthcare professional. Today, when you don the white coat in its symbolism, you begin to the service of humanity, your patients, your community, and your profession. You must and will maintain the virtues that make a professional. Humility, empathy, and compassion. You see, all of us in the healthcare profession, you, myself, those of us on the stage, we take an oath to serve others. We take an oath to make this world better. And that's what we're doing. Now, there's a very interesting history with the white coat. You know, the white coat has only been a symbol of healthcare for a little over 100 years. And that wasn't until the end of the 19th century when we started actually learning about science. And for many of the people in this country and in the world that are not, are not aware of this, up until the late 1800s, uh, doctors wore black coats. They wore black coats because they considered them something formal, like a tuxedo, having to deal with serious matters. Clergymen wore black to indicate the solemn nature of their role in the encounter with their parishioners. However, let's be realistic, folks. In the 19th century and before, seeking an encounter with a doctor was your last resort, and it generally ended in death. Medicine had nothing to offer. And it wasn't until we started realizing about the transmission of bacterial diseases and other inf uh, infirm infirmities that we were able to transform into wearing a white coat. And actually, historically, if you go to Philadelphia, you could see a temple and at Thomas Jefferson, some famous paintings of the operatives were in 1873, I think it was, Egan had one, and they're all the surgeons are dressed in black. In another painting in the late uh, 19th century, they're all wearing white. Candor, the word, is derived from the Latin candidus. That means white. 
you'll learn that when you learn about fungus. The foundation of all professional societies of which you are entering into, you are to be, your first step in becoming a professional is candor or truth, as you heard earlier. You always have to be truthful to your patients, to yourself, and to your peers. The word candidate comes from the fact that the Romans seeking office wore white togas. The depiction of justice over the millenniums has been a statue or a painting dressed in white. The converse, of course, is black. And today, that represents evil or death. And evil and death are always depicted in black. So there's a symbolism to the white coat that you wear. There's a symbolism today because today you start your journey. You start your journey today because why? Because we live in this great society, a great society that needs help, a great society that needs you because whether you want to be or not, each and every one of you will become a leader, whether of a department, of a school, of an institution, of a company, or just the care of an individual. But it's your professionalism that becomes vitally important as we go forward. And what kind of country is it that has leaders without virtues? The virtues that we mentioned earlier, humility, empathy, compassion, and let me tell you, there's more. And you in dentistry have it much better than we do in medicine. We've lost a lot of those virtues. And here at Roseman, we fight to give them back to you because society needs you. Society needs you just not for oral care. And let me tell you how important oral care becomes. Dr. Andrew Peterson, who was mentioned earlier, a graduate of Roseman, while working in a hospital system in the pediatric ICU, kept noticing these newborns that were being born to mothers that had substance abuse or use disorders. She started a program called Empowered. Empowered is a program that treats pregnant or recent mothers with opioid or stimulant use disorders. She's gonna be doing this in all of Utah. When I was talking to Frank about this, he pulled out a paper that he sent me about oral health. Oral health reduces recidivism in people with substance use disorders. The simple fact that you're giving somebody pride turns them around, allows these mothers to keep their children. And she's doing this not just in Las Vegas, but all of Nevada now and then all of, hopefully all of Utah with a unique program that nobody has in this country. She is a shining example of what this university produces. It produces professionals that make the world better. It produces professionals that have the highest of virtues. It produces the professionals that not just see what a problem is, but come up with solutions, which is what we're supposed to be as a nation. People that are get together, confront a problem, and improve the lives of others. Now, there are children that have their mother, and there's mothers that have their children. And this is one of the vital things that Romesman produces. We enter into our shows and professions for reasons. They could be an event that happened in your life, a belief or just a desire. And then sometimes along our path professionally, something happens which shifts our direction. I grew up very much under social justice. That's why it was so important for me to become a physician. I went to college during the Vietnam War. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a leader as a lawyer. Then I saw what went on politically in the early 70s. I was not happy. F. Lee Bailey came and spoke at my university, University of Florida, and talked about how he wins cases today because he has experience and people pay him money, and he should lose them. 
It was the most disappointing lecture I ever went to. So I looked for something that I could do that I thought that I never wanted to do was be a doctor because my father was a doctor. I ended up going into practice with him for 20 years, the greatest 20 years of my life professionally. And when I was in medical school in my second year, my youngest sister was going to turn 18 years old. She was at my alma mater, University of Florida. And she never made it down for her birthday. She was killed in a car accident. I was 23 years old. She was 17, two weeks shy of her 18th birthday. My parents were devastated. And it became my responsibility, the only boy in an immigrant family, to get together this entire funeral. At that time, I made a promise to God. I never wanted anybody to die alone without somebody with them, because I never had the opportunity to say goodbye to my sister. Now, there's a problem when you make a promise to God. Where are you going to hide? There's no place to hide. Well, I was from Miami, so I found City Hall. Because with the policies they passed down in Miami, I don't think God's visited. <laughs> but <laughs> what happened was, also when I started med school, a friend of mine whose father was a professor at the University of Miami gave me a recommendation that I'm going to give to you. At the time, we didn't have cell phones, so it was pretty much stick a small little notebook in your pocket. If there's something you don't understand in class or in a clinical rotation, write it down. If there's an interaction you have with another human being, write it down. What did you learn from that individual or what did you teach that day? Well, that eventually became a book, Waking Up in America, which I actually was published 24 years ago. And whenever I'd go on book talks, I made the promise that any money I made from the book would go towards education my children's education, but education. <laughs> and uh, what I was gonna do now is, coming towards the end, I'm gonna read you one of the passages from my book. I'm a narrative writer. I'm from two islands that we tell a lot of stories. And what ended up happening was on my second rotation, which was in the uh, intensive care unit, I had an individual that was intubated, dying of what we call millerary tuberculosis, which is metastatic TB. So I went on my mission to find his family. Turns out he was a Korean War veteran. He didn't last the 30 days in the unit, and there was only two shelters in the entire Miami-Dade County and city of Miami. I didn't find his family, but I did find a world of poverty that I didn't know existed in my own country. And I have a photograph in my office of a four-year-old and a two-year-old girl on a mattress under a bridge with a mother that's not, you don't see her in the picture, she was pregnant. My wife was pregnant with our son at that time. And there I was under a bridge talking to a pregnant homeless woman. And we had the same conversation, worried about our kid's future. Well, I lived in Coral Gables, what I'll refer to as the city for the financially gifted. And I'm talking to somebody and giving them hope and sometimes realizing, no, even if those two kids wanted to be health professionals, where are they going to study if they live under a bridge? Who's going to help them with their SATs? Who's going to hold their hand in college that has never been in college in their families? And these are the things that we as professionals can change, giving opportunities to others. Don't throw away talent. One afternoon around lunchtime, I walked into the clinic with a sandwich. Now, obviously, I'm Catholic, first of all, so I feel guilty. Number two, I obviously do not need a sandwich. I'm a non-purging bulimic. <clears throat> I greeted the patients in the waiting room and walked over to the pediatric area where I found a mother with three of her children. They had come in from the Salvation Army shelter. Now at the time in the clinic, we had a pediatric area that we set up and we had an area with volunteers to take care of the kids with a glass, the door was glass so the mothers could see in and out, but take a break. Listen, I have two kids. 
if we were homeless and we had to live in a 12 by 14 room, after a week, I think I'd be the only one walking out of the room. This is where kids don't have their own space or their own room. These are shelters. People help through charity. Children need a lot. <clears throat> Our youngest child caught my eye. He was about six years old, a little boy with a sweet smile. I offered him my bag lunch, and he graciously accepted it. He took the sandwich out of the bag, and he split it in half. He took two bites out of one half and slipped both parts back into the bag. Then he carefully folded the bag and put it in his pocket. Why'd you do that, I asked him. I had done, by this time, I have four postdoctoral fellowships. I've had Nobel Prize laureates as professors. I didn't understand a word they were saying. The, I've had the privilege of an education. And here was a homeless child. And I couldn't understand what he was doing or why he was doing it. Do you ever think about what it must be like to be a homeless child? Anybody have kids? I've been promoted to grandfather now, but the, uh, if you have kids, kids have their stuff. It could be a rock, but it's my stuff. And if for some reason my son, the younger of the two, found something that my daughter hadn't used in five years, she wanted her stuff back. But if you live in a shelter, you don't have that. One year we asked the kids in the shelter, what would you like for Christmas? You know what their response was? Socks and underwear. Question assumptions. Things we take for granted, others don't have that privilege. Socks and underwear. And by the way, when I talk to this and I talk to a general audience and I tell this story, I, I say, and if you can, Please, when you donate socks and underwear, make sure they're new. Why did you do that, I asked him. His reply stunned me. It's for my brothers, he said. He was hungry, but he knew his brothers were just as hungry. God has allowed me to study medicine to explore the depths of disease and its treatments. He has given me brilliant professors and inspiring mentors. He has opened the tombs of healing and placed in my hands the most precise instruments of modern technology. And on any random afternoon, God has extended the most remarkable postgraduate opportunities. He's allowed me to find him in the gentle lull of the city of Miami, under a bridge, in an emergency room, in the waiting room of a neighborhood clinic, in the wisdom and humanity of a homeless child. The goodness of that child has stayed with me through the years, and I have often asked myself, could the lesson of the six-year-old child's generosity be multiplied by a community, a government, an entire nation? Could such a spirit help mend a broken system? Can we look at a disheveled man or woman and withhold judgment? Because we're health professionals, and our judgments come down to their health. Every morning in my morning prayers, I pray to God that I can be that six-year-old child and think about somebody. Think of somebody and say, you know, maybe they don't have a smile. I don't know what happened to them yesterday or last night or last year or what they're going through. Yeah, I have a lot of pressure, for God's sakes. I'm a graduate student in medical school, in dental school, in pharmacy school. Well, you know what? Nobody forced you. You chose this on your own free will. And as bad as you think those nights are studying, think about the migrant child that doesn't get the opportunity of education because they got to drive around the country and can't stay in one school. Today you start your journey as a professional. That's a very sacred and important thing in our society. I congratulate each and every one of you and now you have, instead of four years, three years to save the world. So once you don your white coat, get ready to do that. It's really a great journey. Godspeed to all of you, and congratulations.
Thank you, Dr. Greer, for your perspectives and what it means to be a professional. Responsible responsibilities that come with that stewardship, and most importantly, the compassion for others. Thank you. I now invite Dr. Rachel Novak, Assistant Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs, to provide information about your class. What an exciting day. Um, I'm so honored to be here with you. As you know, in addition to being the Assistant Dean for Admissions and Student Affairs, I will also be your anatomy professor. We're gonna spend hundreds of hours together this year. Um, lots of hard work, lots of late nights, um, but I hope that you fall in love with the human body. I wanna share a quick fact with you. If you look around this venue, up at the top and down at the bottom, it holds about 1,800 people. This past year, at Roseman, our students provided dental care to 50,000 patient visits. So that would be this entire room filled 27 times. You truly are part of something great. While you're a student, you're gonna be changing lives of the members of our community. Um, today is a time for officially celebrating the transition from the study of pre-dental sciences to the study and practice of clinical health sciences. And I'm gonna share a few interesting facts with you about your own class. Over 2,200 people applied for these 100 seats that you hold in this class. So that means about one out of every 22 applicants made it to these chairs. The average age of your class is 26. 19 of our students are from Utah, and 81 of you are from various other states and countries around the world. There are 51 females in this class and 49 males. Academically, this is a truly outstanding class. All of our students have completed rigorous study, and in addition to bachelor's degrees in many different areas, interesting areas, it's fun in admissions to see all of your incredible backgrounds, but 24 of you have already completed master's degrees. We have three students in the class who have long careers as dental hygienists, which will really bless their clinical teams. As a group, this class achieved an average GPA of 3.65 in the last 30 hours of their upper division science courses. That's remarkable. All of our students performed well on the DAT. However, our process looks well beyond the DAT. We look at how each and every student in this class will contribute diversity by sharing their unique background and experiences and skill sets. At Roseman, as you know, in the past two weeks, you've heard us say this so many times, we do every single thing that we do in teams. And you're gonna be rotating through teams didactically and clinically. You're gonna have the opportunity to work with every other member of your class. And we believe that that is what makes your individual differences so truly meaningful. Like Mary said in her speech, you're gonna have moments where you're the one being lifted, and other times you're gonna be reaching down and doing the lifting. We're so grateful that all of your individual differences will also help bring perspective to patient care. As you can tell from this brief description, our admissions team comprised of biomedical, clinical faculty, everyone up here on this stage, uh, selected an outstanding group for our class of 2026. At this time, I ask our class of 2026 to rise and be recognized. Thank you, you may be seated. The American College of Dentists is an organization devoted to ethics and professionalism. Several individuals behind me on the stage are fellows of the American College. Our white coat ceremony adapts the tradition of the American College of Dentists, where dentists, faculty, sponsors, and students stand together to publicly affirm their commitment to ethics and professionalism in the provision of person-centered healthcare. As a symbol, the white coat is exchanged to memorialize this occasion. So here's what's gonna happen next. Administrators, faculty, student leaders, other healthcare professionals will escort students to the stage and help them don their white coats. Our photographers, who are exceptional, Loretta and Reinen, will be taking pictures of students receiving their white coats and being congratulated by our chancellor and our dean. These photos will be made available to our students after the ceremony and can be shared with all family and friends. 
At this time, I invite Dr. Dwayne Winden, Assistant Dean of Academic Affairs, to join me at the left podium to introduce the presentation of White Coats. I ask that students and faculty now stand, line up for the presentation of the White Coats. I ask that Chancellor Wells and Dean LeCarey take their positions for photographs with our students. Prior to bestowing the white coats, we would like to provide some information for families and guests assembled here today about the foundations upon which the educational program is designed. The lifelong colleague philosophy encourages all students, faculty, and staff to make each and every interaction reflect a sincere desire to help each other as lifelong colleagues during the DMD program and throughout their careers. The honor code is adapted from traditions of the nation's military ac academies. The honor code simply states that I will not lie, cheat, steal, disrespect others, nor tolerate among us anyone who does. Students, faculty, and staff also commit to each other to help each other to become the best that they can be at what they do and to celebrate our successes. Our mutual understandings and commitments enable each of our students to flourish within a non-competitive environment of trust, integrity, and mutual respect. Those shared commitments enhance Roseman's six-point mastery learning model and create an extraordinarily effective educational environment for all of us. At this time, we are ready to bestow the white coats. Hassan Mahmoud Aboud. Hassan has a Bachelor of Science in Public Health from Wayne State University. He is from Dearborn, Michigan. Colin Adamson. Colin has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Utah Valley University. He is from Pleasant Grove, Utah. Kieran Ahmed. Kieran has a Master's of Science in Biology from Eastern Illinois University. She is from Brentwood, California. Amira Ahmed. Amira has a Bachelor of Science in Biology and Psychology from Lamar University. She is from Port Arthur, Texas. Spencer Gary Allen. Spencer has a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Science from Brigham Young University, Idaho. He is from Redmond, Oregon. Ian Altovelli. Ian has a Bachelor of Science in Medical Studies from Arizona State University. He is from Scottsdale, Arizona. Rama Alzuhaili. Rama has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of Texas at Dallas. She is from Dallas, Texas. Sue Amensinarak. Sue has a bachelor. Ba, sorry. Sue has a master's of science in biomedical science from Texas A&M University. She is from Houston, Texas. John Richard Anderson. John has a bachelor of science in public health and industrial hygiene from Utah State University. He is from Draper, Utah. Jacob Andrew. Jacob has a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology from Brigham Young University. He is from Highland, Utah. Irwa Asad. Irwa has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of Texas at Arlington. She is from Dallas, Texas. Amrit Paul. Amrit Paul Badwells. Amrit has a Master's of Biome Biomedical Science from Roseman University. He is from Elk Grove, California. 
Noah LeVan Bailey. Noah has a Bachelor of Science in Exercise Science from Brigham Young University. He is from Mesa, Arizona. Peyton Bailey. Peyton has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Utah Valley University. He is from Rupert, Idaho. Suchita Vanderupali. Suchita has a master's in medical science from the University of South Florida. She is from Tampa, Florida. Amisha Badwar. Amisha has a master of, of medical sciences from Liberty University. She is from Dallas, Texas. Aaron Braganton. Aaron has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Utah Valley University. He is from Spanish Fork, Utah. Paul Campbell. Paul has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Utah Valley University. He is from Belmont, Massachusetts. Mark Conrad. Mark has a Bachelor of Science in Health Science from St. Francis University. He is from Altoona, Pennsylvania. Sammy David. Sammy has a Bachelor of Science in Human Biology with a minor in Bioethics from Michigan State University. He is from San Mateo, California. Aditya Deshpande. Aditya has a Master's of Medical Sciences from the University of South Florida. He is from Tampa, Florida. Gabriel Eisenhuth. Gabriel has a Master of Science in Biomedical Science from Roseman University. He is from Minota Heights, Minnesota. Andrea Lynn Falkowski. Andrea has a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. She is from Enfield, Connecticut. Elena Ferris. Elena has a Master of Biomedical Science from Roseman University. She is from Bourbon, Bourbonnais, Illinois. Parker Folsom. Parker has a Bachelor of Science in Microbiology from Brigham Young University. He is from Springville, Utah. Hallie Gabel. Hallie has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of North Dakota. She is from Bismarck, North Dakota. Jacob Daniel Gardner. Jacob has a Master's of Biomedical Sciences from Roseman University. He is from Burlington, Washington. Isabella Gaxiola. Isabella has a Bachelor of Science in Public Health from Tulane University. She is from Fullerton, California. Garrett Ray Geiger. Garrett has a Bachelor of Science in Health Science from Arizona State University. He is from Mesa, Arizona. Brenda Giffen. Brenda has a Master's of Biomedical Sciences from Florida Atlantic University. She is from West Palm Beach, Florida. Jasmine Gill. Jasmine has a Bachelor of Science in General Biology from the University of California, San Diego. She is from Murrieta, California. Justina Gorgi. Justina has a Master of Oral Health Sciences from Boston University. She is from California.
Theology from Texas State University. He is from League City, Texas. Miyoshi Hicks. Miyoshi has an Associate of Applied Science in Dental Hygiene from the College of Lake County. She is from Zion, Illinois. Tao Ho. Tao has a Bachelor of Science in Public Health Sciences from the University of California, Irvine. She is from Santa Ana, California. Cynthia Elizabeth Huang. Cynthia has a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Science, Biological Sciences from the University of California, Davis. She is from Stockton, California. Michael Huang. Michael has a Bachelor of Arts in Biology, Society, and Environment from the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. He is from Oakdale, Minnesota. Susanna Huang. Susanna has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from the University of Rochester. She is from Brooklyn, New York. Sarah Jafer. Sarah has a Master's of Health Science at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. She is from Louisville, Kentucky. Kyle Jensen. Kyle has an Associate of, Associate of Science degree in Emergency Medical Services from Utah Tech University and has received his paramedic certificate. He is from Monument, Colorado. Brigham Jukes. Brigham has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Brigham Young University. He is from South Jordan, Utah. Michael Kane. Michael has a, a Bachelor of Science from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He is from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Sun Wan Gan. Sun Wan has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from the University of Texas, El Paso. He is from Seoul, South Korea. Laura Karutsu. Laura has a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration from Seattle Pacific University. She is from Kirkland, Washington. Randy Kwan Jr. Randy has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Utah Valley University. He's from Wallingford, Pennsylvania. Jennifer Lacayo. Jennifer has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Georgia Gwinnett College. She is from Jacksonville, Florida. Adam Keith Lawler. Adam has a Bachelor of Science in Food Science from Brigham Young University, Idaho. He is from Ripon, California. Treng Tina Lay. Treng has a Master of Medical Science from the University of North Texas Health Science Center. She is from Austin, Texas. Marcella Lea Kehe. Marcella has a Master's of Public Health from the University of Utah. She is from Tooele, Utah. Christine Lee. Christine has a Bachelor of Arts from the University of California, Berkeley. She is from Los Angeles, California. Dylan Hatcher Lee. Dylan has a bachelor's degrees in administration and combined science from Texas Christian University. He is from Flower Mound, Texas. Samantha Lee. Samantha has a bachelor of science in biology from the University of California, Los Angeles. She is from Irvine, California. Ida Carolina Lepa. 
Ida has a Master's of Biomedical Science from California Baptist University. She is from Silmer, California. Azneev Libarain. Azneev has a master's, master's degrees in medical gerontology and health administration from the University of Southern California. She is from Los Angeles, California. Samuel Gunton Lofquist. Samuel has a Bachelor of Science in Applied Studies from the University of Minnesota Crookston. He is from Plymouth, Minnesota. Martha Alicia Lopez Munez. Martha has a Bachelor of Arts in Biology from California State University, Northridge. She is from Palmdale, California. Johanna Liu. Johanna has a Bachelor of Arts in Nutritional Biochemistry and Metabolism with a minor in Childhood Studies from Case Western Reserve University. She is from Monroe, New Jersey. Natasha Shafiq Malik. Natasha has a Bachelor's in Bio Biological Sciences from the University of Illinois at Chicago. She is from Chicago, Illinois. Kayla Matheson. Kayla has a Bachelor of Arts in Chemistry from Whitworth University. Kayla is from Spokane, Washington. Jack McGurney. Jack has a Bachelor of Science from Barrett, the Honors College of, at Arizona State University. He is from Tucson, Arizona. Shania Meshnig Giordano. Shania has a Bachelor's in Biological Science from Arizona State University. She is from Shawnee, Kansas. Benjamin Alexander Minnell. Benjamin has a Master of, of Bio, Biomedical Science from Roseman University. He is from Madomidi, Minnesota. Parker Morris. Parker has a Bachelor of Science from Utah Valley University. He is from Cedar Hills, Utah. Bart Kendall Morrison. Bart has a Bachelor's in Human Biology from Utah State University. He is from Idaho Falls, Idaho. Lynn Muhafeld. Lynn has a Master's of Public Health from Baylor University. She is from Dallas, Texas. Chandrika Prasad Manwet. Manem, let's see. Na, Nama, sorry. Chandrika Prasad Nama. Chandrika has a Master's of Biomedical Science from Roseman University. She is from Rockville, Maryland. Tiffany Emma Nelson. Tiffany has a bachelor's in biology from Utah Valley University. She is from Spanish Fork, Utah. Lawrence Nguyen. Lawrence has a bachelor's of science in biology from Nova Southeastern University. He is from San Jose, California. Min Tao Nguyen. Min Tao has a Master's of Biomedical Science from Barry University. She is from Tampa, Florida. Taylor Min Kanwen. Taylor has a Bachelor of Science in Nutritional Science and Toxicology from the University of California, Berkeley. She is from Hayward, California. Stephen Peter Osman. Stephen has a bachelor's in business administration yeah. from the University of Utah. He is from Sandy, Utah. Tara Isabel Othman. Tara has a bachelor of science in healthcare administration from Southern Oregon University. Tara is from Benica, California.
Ishin Patel. Ishin has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from the University of Buffalo. He is from Irvine, California. Pinal Patel. Pinal has a Master's of Biomedical Sciences from Barry University. He is from Fort Pierce, Florida. Shiv Raj Patel. Shiv has a Master's of Biomedical Sciences from Roseman University. He is from Dublin, Georgia. Kelsia Paddock. Chelsea, sorry, Chelsea Paddock. Chelsea has a Bachelor's of Science in Biology from the University of Houston downtown. She is from Kaliolua, Hawaii. Tommy Paulson. Tommy has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Southern Utah University. He is from Salt Lake City, Utah. Lawrence Grace Peabody. Lauren has a Bachelor of Science from the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire. She is from Spring Valley, Wisconsin. Caden Probert. Caden has a bachelor's in microbiology from Weber State University. He is from West Haven, Utah. Zainab Kazalabash. Zainab has a bachelor of science in biology from George Mason University. She is from Ashburn, Virginia. Nuha Ahmed Reziodin. Nuha has a Bachelor of Science from Wayne State University. Nuha is from Bloomfield Hills, Minnesota. Luke Chandler Rockwood. Luke has a Bachelor of Science from Brigham Young University. He is from Arvada, Colorado. Sonia Mary Sabu. Sonia has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Science from Rowan University. She is from Williamstown, New Jersey. Catherine Teresa Sanders. Catherine has a Bachelor of Science in Public Health from Texas State University. He is, she is from Baystrup, Texas. Namat Sardar. Namat has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from San Jose State University. He is from San Jose, California. Sierra Madison Sibley. Sierra has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from Clemson University. She is from Charleston, South Carolina. Seth Archie Smith. Seth has an Associates of Science from Southern Utah University. Seth is from Santa Clara, Utah. Spencer Samuel Smith. Spencer has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Utah Valley University. He is from Eagle, Idaho. Andres Soto. Andres has a Master's of Biomedical Sciences from Roseman University. He is from Ackworth, Georgia. Emily Stutz. Emily has a Bachelor's in Psychology from the University of Massachusetts, Lowell. She is from Lowell, Massachusetts. Brian Tack. Brian has a Bachelor of Science in Dental Hygiene from the Oregon Institute of Technology. He is from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Rashini Trivedi. Rashini has a Bachelor of Science in Human Biology from the University of Southern California. She is from Rancho Cucamonga, California.
Catherine Vela. Catherine has a Master's of Science in Chemistry from the University of Texas at San Antonio. She is from Corpus Christi, Texas. Dao Vo. Dao has a Bachelor of Science in Biology from the University of California, Riverside. Dao is from Riverside, California. Abigail L.C. Warner. Abigail has a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences from the University of Rhode Island. She is from Canton, New York. Kyle Wright. Kyle has a Bachelor's of Art in Sociology from the University of California, Davis. He is from Redlands, California. Hattie Young. Hattie is, has a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from the University of Colorado Boulder. She is from Sebastopol, California. Gore A. Zolan. Gore has a... Gore, Gore has a bachelor's in biology from California State University, Northbridge. Gore is from Los Angeles, California. Yasmin Khaled Zamel. Yasmin has a bachelor of arts in cell biology and neuroscience from Rutgers University in New Brunswick. She's from Alexandria, Egypt. Jason Randy Zarj. Jason has a Bachelor's of Arts in Biology from Emory University. He is from Atlanta, Georgia. I now invite Dr. Clark Dana, Associate Dean for Student Progress and Curriculum to the center podium to administer the White Coat Pledge. I also ask our students on stage to join Dr. Dana at the podium to witness the administration of the oath on behalf of our students and alumni. Well, I can add my perspective. This is an outstanding class. As we've just spent the last week together, studying the 88 principles of ethics and code of professional conduct, emotional intelligence, the three commitments we make and keep with each other, as well as the meaning of this White Coat Pledge. And truly, it is an honor to administer the White Coat Pledge with our newest lifelong colleagues. The White Coat Pledge authored by our faculty, affirms expectations during our dental program, where students work under the supervision of licensed dentists. Now at graduation, the dentist pledge will be administered to guide graduates in their professional endeavors as newly licensed and now independent practitioners. Dentistry, along with other healthcare professions, has adopted the White Coat Ceremony to signify a meaningful milestone in the educational process. Since the middle of the 19th century, the white coat has been the standard attire of the medical profession. Colleges of dental medicine have adopted this ritual, which marks the student's transition from the study of preclinical sciences to the study and practice of clinical health sciences. Clothed in the white coat, the student now embarks with all healthcare professionals upon a lifetime of patient care. 
And so I now ask members of the class of 2026, please rise. Raise your right hand and square your arm. And recite the White Coat Pledge with me. By becoming a member of the healthcare professions and while preparing to become a doctor of dental medicine, I solemnly pledge to conduct myself with the highest ethical and moral standards consistent with the American Dental Association principles of ethics and code of professional conduct, and in conformity with my own values and personal principles statement. I will strive to make ethical decisions based on the principles of emotional intelligence. I will be diligent in my pursuit of academic excellence and professional mastery. I will devote my time and my energies to acquiring comprehensive dental knowledge and the appropriate surgical skills necessary to expertly serve the public to whom I will be accountable and to bring honor to myself and to the profession. I accept the premise that my primary responsibility is to the patients whom I will serve. My goal is to establish and maintain relationships based on honesty, respect, and fairness. I promise to behave professionally and to focus my efforts on treating dental disease and restoring oral health to all who place their trust in me, regardless of circumstance or background. I further pledge to develop others as lifelong colleagues, to abide by Roseman University's honor code, and to help those with whom I associate become the best they can be. I will respect the experience and expertise of my educators and mentors and will seek their guidance and counsel. As a student, I will never approach a clinical situation unsupervised, knowing that providing care to patients is a privilege and is available only under the auspices of my supervisor's license. Therefore, let all come to me safe in the knowledge that their total health and well-being are my primary concern and consideration. All this I solemnly promise as a commitment to myself, my family, my professional colleagues, Roseman University, and the community that I serve. Please join me in congratulating the class of 2026 on taking this major step in their careers. Please be seated. Thank you, Dr. Dana. You've heard throughout this program that the three commitments, emotional intelligence and the ADA principles of ethics and code of professional conduct direct our behavior on a moment to moment basis. Class of 2026, today marks the start of an incredible adventure, a journey that will challenge you, inspire you, and ultimately transform you into competent and compassionate dental practitioners. When you become part of Roseman's family, you are becoming part of a long-standing tradition of excellence in dental education and patient care. And as part of that Roseman tradition, I want you to remember the impact you will have on the lives of your patients. Each person who walks through your door comes with the unique needs, fears, and hopes. Treat them with compassion, respect, and dignity. Be a source of comfort and assurance 
and strive to make a positive difference in their lives through the care that you provide. Once again, congratulations on becoming a part of our dental school family. The road ahead may be challenging, but with perseverance, dedication, and a passion for oral health care, you will succeed. All of us are here to guide you and support you every step of the way. Welcome to our dental school, and may your educational journey be filled with growth, achievement, and fulfillment. What a truly remarkable morning this has been. And on behalf of our entire Roseman family, I want to sincerely thank everyone for attending and participating in this event, both virtually and in person. Events like the White Coat Ceremony reflect the contributions of many individuals. I would like to thank our staff and faculty who managed the details and made it necessary to make this a successful and memorable event. Our white coat ceremony is about to conclude. I ask that the audience remain seated until the stage party, students, and faculty have all exited the hall. Your students will meet you in the lobby. Thank you for attending today's white coat ceremony on behalf of the class of 2026.